Hello, you're watching The Luna Show, and this is part three of my famous interview with icon Dre Ebony. Okay. If you was a person that came up in the era where the House of Ebony, the House of Khan, the House of Revlon, and these houses was kind of rough, and you felt like you was picked on or however, then you grow up and you branch off and you start your own house. What do you teach your kids? Don't take no shit. Don't, 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 don't fall for anything. If anybody mess with you, so what happens is that everybody started teaching their kid in their house, their members, and everything this gangster way. So what happens is that you wind up with role models of houses that show gangsters so of every other house wanted to be that way. Where you had the house of latex, the house of Richards, houses like that that was doing very good positive things, but so easy to follow negativity. We all know that, you know. And to me, like I said, if you was able to be that way and God blessed you to have a change of mind, a change of thought, a change of heart, you should have the same amount of heart to make a difference in a better way, you know? It's not gonna be that easy. Um, I, was, I was talking to somebody yesterday, it was like, oh, you gotta, you, you, you find a losing battle, you, um, you really got, you know what I'm saying, you trying to do. So let me explain something to you. A lot of people wanna see change, but everybody ain't got the heart to make the first step. But when you see somebody making the first step, you'll get on with them and you have a bunch of supporters. I said, I'm quite sure Malcolm X had a dream, Malcolm X had a dream, and they didn't sit there and, and, and have a defeatist attitude from day one. They had an optimistic attitude about what their cause was, and they, and they dealt with it, and they put it forth. And this is one of the reasons why we're here right now, mm -hmm. because of that. Well, I'm not Malcolm X, I'm not Martin Luther King, I'm Dre, but I'm on my beat. I'm empowered by great leaders like mm -hmm. that. Those are the leaders I study. Those are the, those are the type of individuals that actually you know I'm saying showed me what it was to stand up and be accounted for. Because if you don't stand up for anything, if you don't stand up for something, you will fall for anything. And we know that, you know, and it's a shame because the gap, the bridge gap, that's another thing. Because of HIV and AIDS and because of the crack era, we had a very, very strong gap in the generation. And not just in the ballroom scene, in society too. So in the ballroom scene, you get all these different kids that's unstable, where they leaving house to house to house. Their attention spans, they don't want to do anything. In the, and then you got in the streets, where you got the Bloods and the Crips and all that, it's the same thing. It's all a derivative from that era. And we pick up the pieces from that era. You got a whole another generation of kids behind that. That's on they beat. They they when I tell you, you know I'm saying they're in college, they, you know what I'm saying they they, they chain the thoughts and everything is where they're supposed to be. And those are the kids that I've really been bridging with. And us working on zero and in for that lost generation. You know, and that lost generation is actually I say like the twenty four year olds to like the the twenty eight year olds, you know, up in that area. I might be a little off in age right now. But from my observation, and you know, I, I jot these things down. I, it's a lot of things that I've been doing since I've been working here, as into critical thinking about our community and the things that need to be done in our community. I really look at the fact that if we compete against each other at a competition, and that competition is not left at the competition arena, a lot of hatred, envy, and everything follows. Because if you look at a basketball game, the basketball players compete against each other. Of course, they're getting a hell of a lot of money, though. Mm -hmm. But they compete against each other. They go home, they live their lives, they do what they got to do, their wife, their kids, whatever they do. And they go to practice, they go to rehearsal, then they go to compete again, then they go back to their lives. A lot of these kids, this is all the life they know. So they live ballroom. And the ballroom is, the ballroom is just the competition that we, that, that we actually compete in. You know, and once that mindset is instilled in a lot of these these kids in this era, we can get back to the basis of what things need to be. Um, we have a very, very, very strong community. Yeah, um, and, and, and pretty much, 
Our scene needs to do things in unity. I got a Father's Day ball that I'm giving in June. And that Father's Day ball, I asked for the fathers to send me pictures for the flyer. You can't imagine what I went through trying to just get this flyer together. Um, and after I got the flyer together and everything, um, now I said, okay, well, what can I possibly do to honor these fathers? So I put a post up on Wolf Me Wednesdays asking for the computer, I mean the community's involvement, the mothers and the fathers. I wanted to know what they thought their father deserved. I see posts about this one, smack two, that one, pages long. And nobody said anything about what they, and the post says, what do your daddy deserve? Nobody think their daddy deserves anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is my point in all this is that comprising our community to do something united, and if we if we united, we would stand up so strong. Where all those entities that I said we was what was made up of, mm -hmm. we could sit right there and be respected as one of those entities, as, not as one of them, but as our own entity. Okay, so if somebody says sorority, fraternity, house. Gang, they, you know what I'm saying? They, they, we would actually be recognized and we need to stand up together and be recognized. Um, so what I did for the Father's Day Ball is I figured I would give, being I couldn't get them to send the pictures the way they're supposed to, but the flyer came out really nice, I, I got it done. I'm going to have a dinner after the ball where I can have time to really talk to these fathers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, have a, a, a nice portrait on Mount Washington out in Pittsburgh beautiful scenery and disseminate those, those those portraits to each one of the fathers as something memorable that we did together okay following that um is gay pride the heritage of pride parade um i my observation for the last four years that i participated in it our house ballroom community is not representative mm -hmm. at all and being that we have no representation there, I felt like we needed to come together. So we, our float this year has the House Federation logo, the Kiki logo, and all the houses and all the Kiki houses on the T-shirt. And then on our float, the back of the float has that same T-shirt. Well, not the T-shirt, but the, the, the actual the text line. that's on the T-shirt, mm -hmm. the design is going to be on the back of the float. Then you got the star logo on the front. I mean, you got the faces logo on the front, you got the star logo, then you got the federation logo. And it's, it's we, we actually given like a tribal type of air for our float. Because houses could be looked at as tribes, you know. And um, just the, the, the bottom line, I want to see our community stand tall together.